My name is Steve Willis. Today we are looking at ACCA paper FM, Financial Management. We're looking at the tricky topic of lease or buy, and we will explore that topic and ACCA exam technique by looking at question DINK from the September-December 2019 exam. So before you watch the rest of this video, please check that one out at home on your own. Come back and we can compare our work. Okay guys, let's get started. We are in the CBE environment looking at the question and as you know the scenario is on the left, the requirements are on the right. We see the verb is calculate and luckily they gave us the spreadsheet for this challenge and we see the total number of marks for these three parts is 10. So I will give myself 17 minutes to do these three requirements. That's based on 1.7 minutes per mark. And I will not split that very precisely between the requirements because using copy paste, we will save a lot of time when we do part two. And part three will really be just a wrap up comment and one calculation. Start with a little reading. This is going to take several minutes of reading. You can slide this over here using the highlighter tool. You know that we are doing lease or buy, so we need information for both options. We need cash flows, we need discount factor, we need a tax rate, etc. So you're going to read this, you're going to highlight the important information as you go. I'm now in the spreadsheet tool ready to get started. Let's start with the first part and let's remember to clearly label everything we do to help the marker give us the marks we need to pass. So let's start with the present value of the buying option and whenever we're doing a discounting type of problem you know that we need some years. When we did the reading we found that tax is paid in arrears, so a year five at the end because of the tax in arrears. I think I like this label better in the middle. Remember there are no marks for formatting, so don't spend a lot of time trying to make your spreadsheet look pretty. Now we've read the story. Best thing to do before we get started is make a template. We will not freestyle in the spreadsheet, we will make a template. So I've set up a template and I've got five rows, everybody. The first row is the cost of buying. How much are we going to pay at the beginning of year one for this machine? Then the story mentions that we have a maintenance cost, that is our cash flow. However, spending money on maintenance will reduce our tax. So we have row six, the tax savings on maintenance. And then we see the usual suspect in such a question. We see tax allowable depreciation. We'll end that up with a cash flow line. So that's the first step getting to the cash flow line. I can double click on a column separator to auto enlarge that. Okay. And let us now start populating our spreadsheet. I will move it back so we can see what we're doing here and at the end we can we can auto enlarge that. So in year one, the beginning of year one, we will pay $750 and years one to four we will pay 23000 and I can just copy paste that four times. Tax savings on maintenance. Remember tax is in arrears everybody and we said the tax rate is 30 percent. So cell E6 will be equal to the cash flow in year one multiplied by 0 0.3. Now this is a benefit to us. This is a reduction in our tax bill so we need to make that positive by popping a negative sign in front of either of those. Okay. 
drag that over to year five because tax is in arrears. Tax allowable depreciation. There is a lot to do here, so let us use a working for that calculation. I will do my working to the right so that it's easier to copy paste my numbers in. So let me grab the years because I can use these. Let me zoom out. Let's move over a little bit. Let's park the years back over here. Okay. Let's um, tell the marker what we're doing. Tax allowable depreciation. Working one, tax allowable depreciation. So I'm gonna do this, guys, with three rows. The first thing will be the written down value. And at the beginning of year one, we're going to spend $750 on this machine. The tax allowable depreciation is at 25% reducing balance. So I'm going to make a quick formula here to do that quickly. Cell L5 will be equal to the opening balance multiplied by 0 0.25. Okay, the opening balance then in year two or at the end of year one equal to the opening minus the depreciation for that year. If we're using relative cell addresses, we can just drag this over here and it works out lovely. Isn't that nice? Now, it's starting to look cluttered with those decimal places, so I'm going to do a little tactical formatting. There are no marks for formatting, but this is going to be easier on my eye and help me stay organized. Okay. The years picked up that as well. Uh, that's a little bit confusing for me in the exam. I would just leave it, but for this demo, I will put it back. Okay. There's one more adjustment we need in year four. The total of the depreciation needs to equal the 750 less the disposal value. Okay, all of that depreciation needs to equal 700. So we can use a formula to do that. So in cell 05, I can do a quick adjustment here. That will be equal to 750 minus the sum of the three years depreciation minus that residual value. Now, the final row that we need is the tax shield, everybody, or the tax savings. And that to that taxable, uh, tax allowable depreciation will reduce my tax bill by 30%, everybody. Remember that is in arrears. So that's going to be equal to this cell multiplied by 0 0.3. And I can drag this over here. And I do need the five after all, so I can put the five above. Okay. Year five. There you go, that is the tax allowable depreciation working. Moving along, let's zoom out for a second, and we can use the power of the spreadsheet tool, relative cell addresses. I can put cell E7 equal to the figure in M6. And all I have to do is drag that across, and I can pick up my tax savings on tax allowable depreciation. Again, it's looking a little bit cluttered. Let me grab all of this and do a little tactical formatting here, okay? So I will set all of this to one or two decimal places. That is fine. Let's tell the marking team that we are working in some countries dollars to the thousands. We can finish up the cash flow line now. That will be equal to 
the sum of everything above it, which would be rows four to seven. We can drag that across. There we go. That is my cash flow, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, next step, let us discount that to the after tax borrowing rate. And we will use the spreadsheet to help us do all of this math. So we can come over here, guys. We can make a separate working. W2 after tax borrowing rate. So I have a working number two, the after tax borrowing rate. That's simply equal to 0 0.086, that's that pre-tax rate, multiplied by 1 minus 0 0.3, that is the tax shield. And we get the 6% and change. Why don't we set that to a percentage as it is an interest rate. Let's quickly finish up our work here using the built-in functionality in the spreadsheet tool. So I will come back over to my main working area here. And I see that I forgot one item. I forgot the residual value at the end of year four. So we need to pop a 50 in there. Okay, now let us get the present value of these cash flows. So I can use the NPV function to get the present value of years one to five. Okay, so I open up the equals sign, NPV, to tell the spreadsheet I'm using that function. Open up a bracket and let me now grab the after tax borrow borrowing rate, which was in cell. J9, that's the 6.02%. I do a comma. And now I grab the range of cells from one to five. A common mistake is to grab year zero, but when we're using the NPV function, we do not put year zero in because the NPV function starts the discounting on the first cell in the range, okay? Below that, we can put the cash flow in year zero. These abbreviations are fine. The marketing team will understand what we're doing. That will be equal to cell C4, everybody. And now the PV of borrowing to buy, everybody, is the equal to the sum the difference between these two. Wasn't that fun, people, using the spreadsheet to make really quick work of that problem? No marks for formatting, so we're not going to go crazy doing any formatting. And last thing I could do, though, is double click on this column separator to open that up so it's easier to read everything we're doing. Let's now go to part two of this problem, the present value of the lease option. And before I do that, I would like to clean up two things. I'm gonna come back here to my present value formula, and I wanna set the cell to an absolute value rather than a relative value. I simply put the dollar sign before the J and the nine. That means if I copy the formula, it will lock in to cell J9. It won't keep the relative location, but it will refer to the absolute cell address. Let's tell the worker what we're about, the marker, what we're about to do. This will be step two, present value of leasing. And I can do some copy pasting here to save time. So let me just copy paste out this whole segment, copy. Paste, and that's going to save us so much time in the exam, guys. Okay. 
Okay, we're getting ready to get to work. Let's now just clean out all of this. We're gonna start fresh with new figures and new rows. So let us set up this template. We only have two cash flows to consider. We have the cash flow of the lease payment, and then we have the tax savings. Let's change out this here, because this is the present value of leasing, not of buying. And our lease payments are 200,000 per year. However, those lease payments happen at the beginning of the calendar year, so we show them in the column that precedes that year. So we show that starting in negative zero, in, co in column zero, because we're talking about the beginning of year one. And I can just easily drag that four times. Here's a little tricky bit. The tax savings is going to start in year two like it did before. While I'm showing the lease payment in starting in column zero, the calendar year is actually year one. So we show the tax benefit in arrears starting in year two. So I grab the first payment and I multiply by negative 0 0.3 to turn that cost into a benefit. Copy this over to cell five. And ladies and gentlemen, because we copy pasted our whole template preserving relative cell addressing, we are, we are finished in ACCA FM when we're doing lease or buy, we will use the borrowing rate as our proxy discount rate here as well. So there's nothing to change. The discount rate is fine. So that present value of leasing is the result we are looking for. Team, we've got part one done. We've got part two done. I've made the, the results from each section bold so they jump out at us. Now we can get to part three. Let's make the recommendation. Okay, and all we have to do is let's grab this present value of buy. The cell will be broken. I'm just going to reset that. The reference will be broken, so I'm just re-referencing that cell. Present value of leasing, everybody. Copy, paste, reset that value 25. Reset that to row 25. Let's zoom in. Which option was cheaper? Guys, leasing is cheaper. So let's calculate the difference. And that will be equal to this one minus this one. I'm reversing it, right, because they're negative numbers. The difference is a 58, 59, 59,000. Okay. I recommend the lease option because it's 59K less expensive than buying. Guys, we got our final mark there. Remember, there are no marks for formatting. I can come up and just make this look a little bit prettier, just so it looks nicer on my eye, but there would not be a mark for that. Guys, we've just made quick work of lease or buy in paper financial management. I hope you found that video useful. Now, good luck on your exams, everybody.